Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to talk about the brand new Find X3 Pro. It was announced at the same times as the Find X3 series from Oppo and of course we're able to start checking out all of the new features to the true successor to last year, well the Find X2 Pro of 2020, my favorite device of the year. So let's not waste any time, let's go ahead and check out all of the cool new things in the Find X3 Pro from Oppo. This is TK, let's get into it. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. And of course, the main thing about this here is obviously this media review kit is absolutely amazing. Uh, obviously it includes the phone. We got a charger, the 65 watt wire charger in the box, obviously a USB-C to USB-A cable, and of course a pair of headphones that are USB-C since we don't have a headphone jack. They did provide me with three cases. The gray one is the one that comes in the package and of course uh, the light one as well as the carbon fiber one that are very, very nice to make this a very nice, accompanied uh, accessory pack. So here we have it, the brand new Find X3 Pro. Uh, there's a lot to be said about this device. Obviously the aesthetical difference first and foremost is the actual construction of the backing. It's all glass, uh, which obviously it's a very different uh, look than what we've had last year. This is the Find X2 Pro, again, my favorite device of 2020. And I actually still use it to this date, which is really telling you how much I like it. You can definitely see the aesthetical differences. No more vegan leather on the back. This is basically uh, more of a glass finish on the back. And from what I understand that it it literally took them about 40 hours per piece to get the curvature done the exact way you're seeing here. There's no bump here, there's no hump. This actually is a gradual increase going from the backing of the actual device all the way into the camera sensor areas and of course continuing all to the top. We have a curvature on the front as well as on the back. We have the power button here sitting here with a little bit of a green accent on the right side, no other buttons. On the top we have one of the microphones. Switching it over to the left side we have a volume rocker on the left and that's pretty much it. On the bottom, we have a dual SIM card supporting 5G, uh, as well as the ability of USB-C here for obviously data charging, uh, the file transfer, as well as the ability of using it for the headphones. A bottom fire speaker married to the top earpiece gives us the ability of having stereo speakers. We have the always on display as you've seen before with color OS, and of course, a fingerprint sensor that's present on the bottom part of the display. Now, this is a DCI-P3 QHD plus 6.7 inch display in an AMOLED panel that gives us the ability of getting obviously QHD resolution with 120 Hertz at the same time. Now, one of the big differences here is because of the panel that they're using now, we're able to basically have a variable refresh rate all the way from five Hertz up to 120 Hertz, which makes this very nice. On top of the fact that this is also part of the 10 bit, uh, basically a 10 bit camera or 10 bit color system that Oppo has included here, which goes anywhere between the cameras, the internal storage, the display, as well as the algorithms to be able to compress and uncompress uh, the actual content to be able to give us the true 10 bit uh, experience on the smartphone. Now, when it comes down to the sensors that we have here, we have a front facing sensor that's present on the top left here. And this is gonna be a 32 megapixel sensor, giving us the ability of taking uh, 1080p 60 frames per second video on the front facing camera. And of course, when we switch it over to the back we're actually greeted now with that new setup of cameras in the back we have dual cameras that are 50 megapixels so the wide angle lens and the ultra wide are both 50 megapixel sensors both imx 766 sensors uh, and what you also get here is a telephoto lens that gives us the ability of using that nice little telephoto and that one's going to be a 13 megapixel sensor and the new additional one, which actually, if you look at it, is much bigger. It's actually called a micro lens. It's giving us the ability of taking some crazy close-up shots. Where telephoto gives us the ability of getting it close and we have macro lenses. Micro lets us basically put the camera sensor literally on the actual product and giving us the ability of seeing exactly what's in there in a very clear, very crisp image. And I'll, of course, share with you guys some of those. A microphone, dual tone LED flash, of course, as I mentioned. Uh, the battery that we have in here is a 4,500 milliampere battery, a little bit higher than last year from 4,250. Uh, supported by the wireless uh, wire charging and wireless charging. So we have here the 65 watt charger that we get in the box, as well as the ability of actually now charging it with AirVook or what they're calling essentially as their wireless charging capability. Last year's model, the Find X2 Pro did not include any wireless charging, which is definitely a big upgrade this year. We also, of course, have reverse wireless charging. Uh, one thing I will say, though, that this is definitely a fingerprint magnet, so you probably will have to carry a chamois with you, or you can definitely use one of the three cases that they provided us. Uh, in the box, they do include this case, which is actually very nice, protects the lens elements on the back. 
uh, but there is a couple of other options. There's this one with the nice suede material on the inside, provides good protection. And lastly, it's the carbon fiber one, as you guys are looking at, it looks really, really nice. Very minimalistic and leaves the buttons exposed. Uh, exposed. But again, uh, you'll, you will need some type of coverage on the back. Color OS version 11.2 on top of Android 11. We have 12 gigs of RAM on this model, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888's processor. Now, this model that I have here is 256 gigs of internal storage, and it's a little bit different than the model I had last year. But again, overall, dual SIM, 5G supported in here. And as I mentioned to you guys, all of this is running the latest software. I did double check. There is no update on this uh, as far as since I've had this unit. Now, as far as the experience here, ColorOS 11 is one of the best implementations of a custom skin over Android, and that's one of my favorite features. Now, the reason we say that is because this also includes a lot of functional features that we haven't seen in the past. First and foremost, we have Dolby Atmos for sound, and of course, under display, we have a lot of options between light and dark mode. Uh, but not only that, even with dark mode, you're able to actually customize the level of dark mode, which is part of ColorOS. So you can go between enhanced, medium, or gentle, customize it, and of course, time it if you want to, or auto-switching it. Um, eye comfort, eye control, of course, uh, the ability of changing the color temperature as well if you'd like, natural tone display if you'd want to be able to turn it on. Um, screen vi uh, options here, you have the vivid options, gentle, cinematic, and brilliant. And you also have the ability of actually customizing the colors on your device to your own vision. So if there's any concern regarding color blindness or any issue, you're able to actually turn on different filters or even go in there and personalize it and go and take a color test that is built into the system. So you can actually tune it exactly to your personal preference. It's built in directly within the color options and you're able to set it up and can activate it, which is very, very nice. Now, one of the other options we also have here is the video image enhancer, the ability of activating it and enhancing the images that we get there. We also have the ability of turning video enhancer that also helps helps us get much better video representations on the display. Um, under more, we have the option of turning on QHD as well as high refresh rate. So QHD or Full HD Plus is the resolution based on the aspect ratio that we have here. And of course, 120 frames per second or 120 hertz for the high refresh rate or standard. And you're able to actually carry it for quite some time. Again, we have a 4,500 milliampere battery. This is going to last a long time. Bright HDR video mode. You can also turn that on if you'd like to whenever you're playing video back on the device. Uh, personalization are, is still here, a big part of the ecosystem. So we have edge lighting here that you're able to customize. You can actually go in there and change the different colors uh, depending on the actual notification that you're getting. Of course, we can also customize the color, the accent color, the font, as well as the notification drawer. And keep in mind that you, this now actually supports third-party font as well as basically native ones that are built in. Um, icon style, that's the one we'll be able to turn on. As you see, we have multiple ones. I have uh, UX and Vural installed over there as well. And that actually gives us the ability of just customizing it to the level that we want. Uh, grid size customization, always on display, and as well as the fingerprint uh, kind of uh, animations uh, option that you get there. So you can get different ones. Uh, and depending on which one you like, you can also set it up and change it from here. Lastly, the ability of customizing our always on display to even make our own custom always on display. This pattern that you see there, I actually designed it. And of course, if I lock the device, give it a second, it'll start drawing it every single time right above all my notifications. Fingerprint sensors, very fast, very nice. Wallpapers, themes, all of those are all within the system. And of course, easily accessible directly from the top. Uh, we have uh, sound and vibration, the ability of turning on and customizing our sound experience. This is also where you'll be able to turn on and customize the Dolby Atmos experience and customize it to your own liking. And then from there on, we have pretty much the standard access accessibility. Android 11 security features with, uh, with permission control is also built in here, uh, as well as the new power menu that's built in within Android. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and turn it on here, give it a second. And we can see here the new power menu, and you're also all able to add uh, shortcuts to automation apps uh, directly within Google Home on your homes on your power menu. So it's definitely very nice. They also include Oppo Relax 2.0, which is also included in here. You're able to customize it, the different music, different moods, and all of this is basically built in directly into your system. Uh, the other thing is obviously the game space is updated as well as the ability to customizing the experience all the way from balanced mode, uh, low power mode, of course, to competitive mode, which basically overclocks and runs everything 100%. I have a few games installed, PUBG Mobile, Asphalt 9, uh, Call of Duty Mobile, as well as Genshin Impact, uh, just to kind of test it out. Overall, the performance on the smartphone actually works really nice. And specifically when we're running Geekbench performance. So when we run it in standard balance mode, where we're getting basically 921 with 3092, and when we run turn it on on competitive mode, we're able to go all the way to about the 1120 to 3375. Uh, keep in mind that there is a setting directly within this uh, battery settings here that gives you the ability of turning on performance mode 
without having to be inside of the game application. So you go into the battery section, you go to more battery, and then you can turn on high performance mode. Again, pretty much the exact same mode uh, if we were able to jump in directly into the game space and then just turn on the profile to competitive mode. It's exactly the same thing, just manually turned on. Uh, the cameras that we have here, as I mentioned to you guys, are capable of providing us some crazy good images. First and foremost, it's going to be that macro mode or that micro, uh, microscope mode is that they're referring to here. Once you turn it on, the camera sensor switches over to this sensor and you can see the light that's turned on there. Provides lighting for the actual experience that it's trying to take a picture of. And what I really wanted to say basically is the best way to look at it. So let's say I put it right here on the table. You can actually see the actual fibers of this mat. This is literally how crazy this is. Like you could see how clean the image is and you're able to take pictures straight from there. So let's go ahead and put this down and let's go ahead and try to take a quick picture. And then once we grab that picture, you can actually see the fibers. Like this is crazy close. This is my, this is macro photography to the next level. And again, one of the reasons why they're calling it a microscope mode. So we have night photography, we have video, we have photo, standard mode, of course, wide angle lens and telephoto, uh, portrait mode, of course, with both front facing and back facing cameras, uh, dual, view, uh, dual view video, slow motion, uh, time lapse, of course, uh, movie expert mode and of course panorama text scanner which is really really good that microscope uh, option that i showed you guys just a second ago and of course stickers to be able to just get a little bit of fun now expert mode is essentially pro mode for uh, images so this is not going to be able to take any videos because that's in the movie mode uh, we have raw support here between raw and raw plus so you're able to turn that on if you want to be able to play a little bit more with bringing out some of those colors and of course the ability of changing between a wide angle lens a standard focal length here as well as the ability of changing it from there and controlling anywhere from the iso the shutter speed the white balance and of course uh, just the auto focusing system now this is where we'd be able to start using some of the pro level equipment here that they're talking about where we're able to shoot in hdr but also in log form so this is something very different uh, photography of making taking videos with smartphones has been uh, obviously one of the big things about them is the ability of getting them to show and to look the best as possible now with the new camera system that we have in the back we're able to shoot 4k with log hdr and of course stabilization with eis and ois so stabilized footage with control and using the best experience that you want you can of course minimize everything whenever you're shooting and then bringing it back whenever you need it as far as the rear facing camera the maximum resolution we'll be able to shoot is 4k 60 frames per second uh, switching it over to the front facing camera we're basically uh, kept at 1080p 30 frames per second or 720p 30 frames per second and that's the camera that you guys are looking through right now but let's not waste any time let me go ahead and give you a quick sample on the front facing and the back facing sensor we're going to start off with the front facing camera here 1080p 30 frames per second is the most that we can get uh, but we're also able to get stabilized video now this is not the stabilized one but if i was walking uh, it does crop in a little bit on the view so you do want to make sure that you're comfortably a, a distant from it so that you're framed correctly like this but again this should be a good example of what we're able to do here 1080p 30 and of course uh, stabilized if you really want it let's go ahead and switch over to the back facing sensor switching it over to the primary sensor here we're capable of shooting 4k 60 frames per second now 8k should be possible i'm not sure if this is going to be coming up as an update later on but again 4k 60 is going to be the best that we can shoot here uh, and of course keep in mind we still have that ultra steady option which enables us to use a slightly well ultra steady pro which gives us a little bit of wider view uh field of view when you're recording stabilized video and we'll get into that in a second again 4k 60 should be one of the best options that we have here and uh one of the last things is uh, the microphone one of them is at least facing us here so audio from this side should be a little bit better than what we heard in the front so now we have that turned on i'm using the ultra steady pro function which enables us to have a slightly wider view a field of view and again walking around handheld no problem and as you saw there video and audio sound pretty good directly from here and again you have so many more options to be able to actually play and use it uh, specifically the picture in picture where you're able to use both the front facing sensor and the back facing sensor at the same time as i'm showing you guys there with the, the actarius uh, uh, figure that i have uh, it looks really nice if you want to be able to be part of the actual photography when you're recording it. Let's go ahead and do a quick audio sample here with the top mounted speaker and the bottom firing speaker for the stereo experience, again supported by Dolby Atmos. We're going to play Jumbo by Alex Crindo. This is an NCS release.
as you can hear right there sounds really good and it sounds actually loud enough with some bass into it the, even though we're playing the volume at 100 percent the audio did not have any distortion and it actually sounded pretty good again keep in mind no headphone jack so you are able to use the pair of headphones that they provided you in the box the wired usb-c ones or you're able to pick up your own and again keep in mind the audio is going to be tuned using the dolby atlas configuration here now next we're obviously going to talk about gaming so i'm going to share with you guys also a quick gaming session that i did uh, again those are the four games that i have installed you're able to use other controllers as well uh, one thing i would probably say is tune the experience to the game that you want to use so that you're getting the best experience uh, and of course you'll be able to basically tune it to the game that you're using now once you're inside of the game accessing the game space is very simple you just have to swipe from the top left it's already present now in here you're able to configure a few things we have the brightness level here on the left the cpu and the gpu load as well as the frames per second on the gaming uh, you have obviously the ability of changing the uh, touch optimization here per game as well as the performance mode to customize it so here performance i have it on competition mode uh, we have autoplay of course we have the ability of turning that on there last but not least is game focus mode that turns on uh, the ability of just turning off all notifications so if i can swipe back one more time i can actually exit out of it otherwise it just basically blocks everything for us and of course uh, screen recording is present right there screenshotting and of course block notifications so all of these are pretty much standard let's go ahead and jump into a quick sample of course on all of the games that i have already installed here <laughs> Confirmed. Hostile Predator missile inbound. you got from the Statue of the Seven! Paimon's never seen a stone. All Paimon knows is that it's dangerous. Now, the last thing I wanted to share with you guys is if you decide to start using the 10 bit option on the camera, and that would be basically going into the settings tab here and going all the way down to the ability of turning on 10 bit. You need to be aware of that 10 bit images, uh, which essentially end with the HEIF uh, format, don't typically work on every system. So you need to download certain extensions to be able to actually use them on your PC. Uh, on the phone, it actually works perfectly fine. And when you do take a picture that is a 10-bit image, it automatically tells you. So if you turn it on right here, it works basically in night mode as well as photo. You'll notice right there, there's a notification saying 10-bit right there. And once we take a picture, let me go ahead and just undo this one because I don't like to leave it on all the time. And once we take any images with them, it actually tells us when an image is a 10-bit image. So an example would be right here when we're looking at this image. It just absolutely, uh, we have some rain that was just coming in uh, today. And of course, that just nice green popping image. And you're able to see basically the benefit of using 10-bit. And the reason behind that is because the entire system is designed to be able to handle 10-bit color as opposed to the normal 8-bit mostly what we see with most other smartphones. Uh, I'm talking all the way from the camera sensors on the back to both the 50 megapixel sensors as well as the telephoto lens. Um, of course, even with the processing power, the internal storage, and the display is capable of providing us this level of quality of images. Again, this is a very nice, very high quality image. Unfortunately, I haven't, I don't have the ability of editing uh, HEIF uh, fi files or 10-bit images in my Adobe uh, suite right now, but 
I can definitely ap uh, appreciate having them here. I did take a couple of the images without having uh, HAI turned on on them, and they still look pretty good. But again, having the extra data to be able to process it later on is always appreciated. Uh, the last thing before we, uh, we're done here, I wanted to share with you guys, we now have uh, shortcuts for the fingerprint. You can actually customize them. So you can actually go straight into it, access your profile, and then customize the experience there. It really works very nicely. Now, there's a few other options inside of the editor that are very nice. Uh, first and foremost is the editor itself has a very nice uh, hiding option. So this image that we're looking at here is exactly this image, what I actually decided to hide the roof here and the back wall uh, so that it actually doesn't show. And you can actually kind of see it. It looks really nice. And it's easily, uh, actually almost, not even noticeable that this was an edited image. Uh, again, removed everything and it looked like I was just taking a picture straight into the sky from behind the trees. Now, there's a few other options that are also built in here. I wasn't able to actually get a very good image, but if you do definitely check out my Instagram as well as my uh, Twitter at TKDSL8655, uh, I'll be starting to post more pictures of those. But the AI palette is one of the new options that enables us to enhance an image by using a palette or a color palette from another image. So if we go under the plus sign, let's say here, I wanna use that root folder here and I'll take this image. You can see that it kind of applied that theme or that nice little color palette. Uh, and of course you can see here between the original and the image there. Uh, the example that uh, Oppo showed us before, uh, it was using actually a sunset where they were able to apply some of those colors to that beautiful sunset there. Uh, but unfortunately I haven't been able to go to the beach yet, but uh, we should be able to definitely enjoy that with many other images. And of course the cameras on here are just fantastic. The enhancements that we see with the Find X3 Pro go beyond just the normal aesthetic look, obviously. The design on the back, the backing that takes a long time to actually even process, that nice gradual transition between the back as well as the camera sensors without having some kind of a, a bump there. So all of it is literally one piece of glass that is machined to actually look exactly that way. Um, and of course, the, curvy, the, the curved edges on the display on the front as well as on the back. Uh, the stereo speakers sound great. Having wireless charging and also having it to be able to actually support 30 watts wireless charging. It's actually faster than most uh, devices uh, that usually run at about 15. Now, reverse wireless charging will work at 10 watts, basically. Uh, so that's going to be the slowest transition. But if you want to be able to charge up your wireless earbuds or anything that uses Qi charging, it's going to work absolutely fantastic. When it comes to charging here, the wire charging obviously will be the fastest. It's not from zero or literally 1% all the way up to about 50% that gets there within 13 minutes. We're talking 50% of a 4,500 milliampere battery in 15 minutes. You can go all the way to 100% in 36 minutes with the wired connection. If you decide to go ahead and charge it, let's say using the wireless charging, as let's say the VOOC charging or the Air VOOC that they're calling, and that's gonna give you the ability of going to 100% from zero in 65 minutes, which is a little bit over an hour. Again, very nice, very functional. So if you wanna charge it wired or wirelessly, absolutely no problems. Now the performance power that we have here with the Snapdragon 888, the 12 gigs of RAM, the 256 gigs of internal storage are absolutely great. Um, I think the overall packaging that we have here, even though it's ever so slightly smaller than last year's Find X2 Pro, is still very nice, very much a very good experience with ColorOS 11.2. And all of the new updates that we've seen here with the cameras, the dual 50 megapixel sensors, as well as that new micro option, that micro lens option that we have in there, is actually crazy good and gives us really very unique images that I don't think any other device can do at this point, where you're able to get that close to the actual subject. And by using that little ring of light around that camera sensor, it enables us to actually have very good visibility. So even if you're in a dark area, it actually is going to get pretty good images with that micro mode. I'm really, really happy. Obviously, this is not my full review of this device. There's going to be a separate video that I'll do for you guys for the full review. Uh, but I wanted to kind of give you guys my TK Essentials kind of view to a smartphone. If you're thinking about picking it up, I feel like in this video, I gave you enough of an experience between all of the new features, as well as the capabilities of the Snapdragon 888, and of course the Find X3 Pro, that hopefully you're able to make a decision if this is the right phone for you. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support. And of course, I'll see you guys in the next video.